Now we're still looking at the end of verse 14, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And we've seen the first word pitch, 3722 in Strong's Concordance, is the word that means atonement, and is translated that way many times. The word within is the word house. Make atonement for the house of God is what that is pointing to. And then it goes on to say, pitch it within and without with pitch. And the word without identifies with the location, the place where that which is under the wrath of God is found. And so within the ark, you have the house of God. You have the elect, the body of true believers. And their presence within is due to the atonement of the Lord Jesus from the foundation of the world. That's how they're able to be delivered. That's why they will survive the flood, which is an outpouring of God's wrath. They will make it through the judgment. But at the same time, not only is there an atonement within, but there's an atonement without with pitch. And the atonement without has to do with the people historically that were living at that time in the days of Noah. They were without the ark and God made determination. Now is the time in his program of judgment to destroy the first earth and to provide a historical example of what will happen at the end of time with our present earth. And so God poured out his wrath on all people outside of the ark. And in so doing, he slew them. They died in the process of making payment for their sin. That is, the law of God demands satisfaction for the sins of mankind. Because every human being is married to the law. And it says in Proverbs 6, verse 34, For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. And God is the man in view. He's married to the people of the earth, yet they have committed adultery against him. He adulterers and adulteresses is how the Bible addresses mankind. And therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance, nor receive atonement from any other source. There will be no ransom for their soul, because Christ has made the payment for a specific number and specific people. And for the rest, well, now there is no Savior. They have no one to be their substitute or to stand in their stead and therefore they must die for their own sin, and that's what the flood accomplished. It was the pouring out of the wrath of God in fulfillment of the law that says the wages of sin is death, the payment for sin. You know, we live in a world that thinks you can just sin and sin and sin and get away with it that there's never any payment to be made for our sinful thoughts and our sinful words and our sinful deeds. We just multiply them and they become enormous, just a whole mountain of iniquity. And because we don't see anything happen at the time, and you know, the Bible does say, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, The hearts of men are fully set in them to do evil, and God does not execute it speedily. That is, the moment a person sins, God does not strike them dead then and there. And so, a man sins and seemingly, apparently, gets away with it, and so he sins again and again and again and again. And then he gets bolder with the type of sin the degree of the transgression until we find ourselves living in the world like we're living in today, where people think they can do whatever they please. They can take a law of God and just turn it completely around. They can call good bad, and that which is right they can say is evil, and so forth. Yet there is a God, and there is a law, and the law demands justice be served, and therefore, the sinner must die in accord to the law. 
as the law has decreed, the wages of sin is death, and the people of the world of Noah's day know this because they've experienced it. They didn't believe Noah that God was going to destroy them until the flood waters started to fall from heaven and open up from beneath and so forth. But once it happened, then they knew the judgment of Jehovah. Then they experienced the judgment of God, and then they were making payment. They personally, individually, each human being that had sin, whose thoughts were only evil continually, was God's assessment of the people of the world at that time. They were then performing the atonement for their own sin. Exactly what Jesus did. Jesus bore the sins of his people. He became a sinner in God's sight. And God poured out his wrath upon him. And Christ suffered and died because of sin. That was the atonement. The only difference between what Christ did for his people and what will happen to each sinner in particular that is unsaved without a savior is that Christ being almighty eternal God was able to overcome death and God the Father raised him from the dead victoriously, gloriously, and he was declared to be the son of God, the firstborn from the dead. That will not happen with finite, temporal, feeble, little man. He does not possess that kind of power. And the terrible wrath of God will destroy him. As he dies for his sin, he ceases to exist. Man has no power, the Bible tells us, in the day of death. He has no ability to overcome death And as a result, in that atoning work, he dies and is gone forever. He's like the beasts that perish. And that's what happened with all the unsaved people of the flood. That's what has happened with all unsaved people over the course of history. That is what will happen with all unsaved people today. They will die in their sins. God's law will get its payment and be satisfied and then they will be gone forevermore. This is the atonement without. The atonement that the unsaved must partake of, and they themselves must be involved with, because God will punish them for their sins. 